Uh, Syria, uh, you, you've spoken like, about this yesterday, like there have been developments since the Middle East, between the war border crossing. Uh, do you have any general reaction to that and the impact, and also the uh, situation with uh, insurgent groups? Some of them have been enthusiastic about having communities as well, even directly threatening to the Sure. Uh, and I know that our ambassador to the UN, uh, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, spoke to this earlier today uh, as well. But what you heard from me yesterday as this was emerging, what you heard from Ambassador Thomas-Greenfield this morning is that we very much welcome the UN diplomacy. We take note of the regime's arrangement with the UN uh, to use the Bab al-Salam and al rai crossings uh, as our focus remains on helping people in need, helping all people in need course, our Turkish allies, uh, but the people of Syria as well. Uh, to that end, we welcome the news that some UN aid moved through the Bab al-Salam and al rai crossings today, uh, and we look forward to receiving more from the UN about how this arrangement uh, is playing out on the ground. Um, when it comes to the various uh, groups uh, inside uh, of Syria, first let me just make reiterate the broader point. Uh, our focus right now is on saving lives, is doing as, our focus is on doing as much as we can uh, to see as much aid as the international community, community can muster, uh, both in Turkey and making its way uh, into Syria. Um, we have called for unhindered access uh, to this aid. We have made that call uh, when it comes to the regime. Uh, we've made that call when it comes uh, to opponents of the regime. Everyone should put aside uh, their agendas and affiliations uh, in service of one pursuit and one pursuit only, and that's addressing the humanitarian emergency, the humanitarian nightmare uh, that's unfolding in parts of Northwest Syria. Can I just follow? Sure. You are. I um, just on Turkey, I mean, give an update uh, on what exactly the USA team is doing there right now. You said our focus is saving lives, but um, unfortunately it's day nine now. So like, I mean, has, how, is, how is their mission gonna evolve going forward? Sure. Uh, so as we've talked about this mission to date, uh, we've talked about the uh, search and rescue, the urgent search and rescue function of it. Uh, of course, this operation will continue to evolve as we get further away from uh, the first tremors and the earthquakes uh, that shook uh, large swaths of Turkey and Syria earlier uh, this month. But as you know, Myra, uh, we responded immediately in, in the aftermath of these earthquakes. We deployed uh, the disaster assistance response teams within hours. Uh, we announced last week that we're providing an additional $85 million uh, above and beyond our initial response. Uh, we deployed these urban search and rescue uh, teams with nearly 200 members, 12 dogs, 170,000 pounds of specialized equipment. Uh, and the new funding uh, that we announced last week will support uh, our broader response efforts. And by the way, uh, those components are uh, intended both for Turkey, uh, but also uh, for use in Syria as well as appropriate. As these search and rescue teams continue expanding uh, their search across all hit, hard hit communities uh, in uh, Adi Yaman, uh, we'll continue to work as hard as we can to search for survivors. There have been stories, even though we are in day eight and nine, in uh, recent hours of people almost miraculously uh, being pulled from the rubble. Uh, we are not going to give up hope. We are not going to relent in our commitment to doing everything we can uh, to save uh, every single life uh, that we can. Uh, but we are planning beyond this initial stage for the longer term needs for, of survivors. Uh, and their communities as well. We know that the people of Turkey and the people of Syria uh, over the much longer term will need shelter, food, medical supplies, and clean water. And our partners, we and our partners are already working to provide this critical support. Uh, the State Department is working through UN agencies and NGOs uh, to provide emergency assistance on both sides of the border in both Turkey and Syria, uh, including providing hot meals, water, medical care, <clears throat> Uh, non-food items such as blankets and hygiene kits, temporary shelter, shelters and structural engineers. Uh, the international community uh, also has a collective moral obligation to do all it can. Uh, there have been appeals uh, from the UN, 
uh, we have put out uh, our own appeal. We've made an appeal to the American people, uh, knowing that this is a response effort that will need to transcend any single country, any single government, and will really need to uh, involve the entire international community. Uh, we remain in close touch with our Turkish allies. Uh, as you know, uh, earlier this week, the Secretary again had an opportunity to speak to Foreign Minister Çavuşoğlu uh, for his uh, second call with his counterpart uh, since uh, the earthquake, President Biden. Uh, Earlier this week? Today? Uh, excuse me, no, it was uh, uh, a couple of days ago now, I'm sorry. Yeah, Thursday, uh, Thursday, that's right. Um, uh, President Biden also had an opportunity to speak to President Erdogan. Uh, Secretary Austin has been in touch uh, with his counterpart uh, as well. Just to give you a little bit more um, granular texture, um, since arriving, the uh, search and rescue team that I alluded to has assessed more than 5,500 buildings across Saudi Yemen. Uh, just this weekend, those teams assisted Tur Turks re rescuers in providing uh, medical consultation to a mother and to a child uh, freed from uh, the wreckage there. Uh, in Syria, our humanitarian partners have been responding since the earliest uh, moments. And we've been, as you know, the leading humanitarian donor to Syria over the course of uh, this now 12-year civil war. We provided $15 billion uh, over the course of that conflict, which uh, in the first instance, allowed a number of NGO partners to be present on the ground and to begin uh, that response just uh, as soon uh, as the earthquake struck. Uh, as of Sunday, and this number has uh, increased since then, a total of 52 UN trucks have successfully crossed into Syria from Turkey. Uh, that followed a fourth UN convoy of uh, 10 trucks with supplies from USAID and the State Department. Um, we know this uh, every single truck that makes its way across is welcome, it is needed, uh, but it is uh, insufficient. And we are going to continue to do all we can uh, to see as much assistance flowing, again, to both sides of the border. Can I just sure. on, on Syria? Now, there are no American teams on the ground in Syria during search and rescue. Are there? We are operating primarily through our humanitarian no, partners but, on the ground. But no, no actual American teams that, you know. Because the other teams, I think, are, are probably folding up and leaving, especially for Turkey and so on. Now, the, the two things, how do you monitor what's going on in terms of search and rescue in Syria and, uh, and the, let's say, a number of casualties, or how it's coming along? How do you keep track? Said, even before this earthquake, we were in daily contact uh, with our humanitarian partners on the ground in Syria. Uh, since the earthquake, the cadence of that contact has increased. They provide us with situation reports. They let us know uh, what they're finding on the ground, the scale of the devastation they're seeing. But perhaps most importantly, they provide us with precisely what is needed on the ground uh, by the victims, by the communities, what the United States can do, uh, what the international community can do. So that conversation is vital. Uh, as we calibrate our response and as we uh, seek to, uh, with the international community, do everything we can to uh, enhance the scale and scope of that response. So, but there is an area that is under the control, in one way or another, of the United States. Are there, you know, movements from that area to a tricky area and so on? I, I would, uh, I don't think it's a fair <clears throat> assessment to say that there are regions of Syria that are under control uh, of the United States. Uh, uh, there are regions of Syria that are disputed, that are not controlled by the regime, uh, but the United States is not controlled in those areas. As I was saying, like, there is some military presence in Syria, and from, this, from that area, you know, is there movement between that area and the Shrikan area? In uh, terms of maybe trucks or... It's, or it's what we're calling for. We want to see unhindered flow of humanitarian goods, humanitarian supplies, uh, to uh, opposition-held areas, to regime-held areas, uh, into areas where uh, there may be uh, both actors uh, present. We want to see uh, humanitarian supplies have uh, full and free mobility uh, across Syria to where it's needed most. And since, I'm sorry, uh, since the, uh, uh, the Department of the Treasury uh, issued its, you know, lifted its uh, restrictions and so on, how has that impacted the situation? Do you have any way of assessing that, that in the last four or five days this happened as a result of that? Decision. It's uh, a question, Saeed, that's, that's difficult to answer because it involves a, a, a counterfactual. What would not have happened had it not been for the issue issuance of that general license? Uh, what we can say is that uh, Treasury and the administration thought it important to issue that general license uh, to leave no doubt 
in the minds of any of those who would seek to assist the people of Syria. Uh, that our sanctions are not targeting humanitarian assistance. Uh, they will not be uh, penalized for uh, providing humanitarian assistance. assistance. And to the contrary, uh, we are encouraging uh, the world to provide humanitarian assistance, to follow the lead uh, of the United States that over the course of the past dozen years has been the world's leading humanitarian provider to the Syrian people. We want to see countries. Uh, we want to see aid organizations. Uh, we want to see private individuals do everything that they can uh, to help the people of Turkey and the people of Syria. May I follow sure. up? Just to point about, um, yeah. uh, have there been any contacts with, uh, with the Saudi I, I'm not in a position to speak to uh, any high-level contact, and I couldn't say what, is what may have happened uh, at a lower level, uh, operational level on the ground, uh, for instance. But uh, the message that we're sending to the Assad regime uh, is precisely what I said. Uh, we are uh, seeking to assist the Syrian people, first and foremost. Um, we want to see aid flow unhindered uh, between parts of Syria and, and across the border into Syria. Uh, uh, two questions on this. Uh, is the U.S. considering using uh, its military bases in Syria for aid? We're going to do what is needed most. Uh, and if there is an appropriate role for uh, any installations uh, in uh, the region uh, that we control to be a part of that response, uh, we are absolutely uh, uh, determined to do that. As you know, our um, uh, base in Incirlik has uh, been an important hub uh, for our response effort inside Turkey and a response effort inside Turkey that has enabled us uh, to continue to flow humanitarian assistance across the border into Syria. Uh, if there's a role to play uh, for any installations inside of Syria, obviously that's something we'll take a close look at. And the uh, Secretary